Okay, sorry the last lecture uh, went on a little long, got a little verbose. Let's try and speed this one up, all right? Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about waves and then some particular things that we use when we measure sound waves. So the first thing we're going to talk about is spherical and plane waves. And this is not specific to sound waves. This is a general idea about waves. As you recall, back when we, in the previous lecture, we talked about how the intensity of waves drops off as a function of area, right? Or, and we said that that typically goes proportionally to uh, 1 over r squared. When we discussed 1 over r squared, we were thinking about the idea that the sound was spreading over bigger and bigger spheres as the wave went out. All right, so this is an example of something known as a spherical wave. A spherical wave is simply something where I have a source and the waves travel out radially away so that if I, if I plot a wave front, what's a wave front? Go out, find everywhere where the, you've got a crest instead of a trough, right? So we go out into the ocean, I drop a pebble into the ocean, I see these rings coming out where the water is highest. Those rings are what we would call a wave front or a wave crest. In three dimensions in space, right, I have a speaker, it's emitting sound, and those, in a spherical wave, those wave crests make a sphere. In two dimensions, right, like a drop, I'm dropping pebbles in the pond, these wave crests will form circles, rings, all right? So in a spherical wave, what that means is that these wave crests form spheres, they travel out radially away from the source, and the intensity drops off as one over r squared. A plane wave, is when my wave crests are planes. I'm not drawing very good planes, all right? So I have my waves traveling in some direction, and if I look at all of the places that are connected together where I have a wave crest, I'll get planes, all right? A plane wave is what you get if you had, like, your speaker, and your speaker was really big, and you were measuring in really close to the speaker, right? Then the waves aren't spreading out. I just get plane waves. And in a plane wave, the intensity is constant. It doesn't drop off as you move away because the wave's not spreading out, all right? But true plane waves don't exist, right? Because a true plane wave has to go off to infinity. If you look at my speaker, here at the edges, right, things are going to be spreading out. And then when I get a long distance away from my speaker, they look like plane waves here, sort of, except at the edges. But as I get further and further away, they start looking more and more like a spherical wave, all right? So when we talk about a spherical wave or a plane wave, that is what we're talking about. Plane waves have to be made by extended sources, and spherical waves are what we get when we have small sources emitting waves and they travel off in all different directions. All right? Okay. Now, when we measure the intensity of sound waves, oftentimes we'll use a scale known as decibels. All right? And the decibel scale is a logarithmic scale. So if I measure the intensity of the sound at some location, and I plug it into this equation, I'll get this beta here, which is the sound level in decibels. And this I naught here is just a constant. It's a constant intensity, 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared. Uh, 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared is known as the threshold of hearing. Now, everybody's ears are a little bit different, but kind of on average, if the sound intensity is less than that, most people can't hear it. If it's greater than that, most people can. So that's why we call it the threshold of hearing. So the idea with uh, the, the decibel scale is we divide the intensity by this level, take the logarithm, multiply by 10, and that gives us the sound level in decibels. So the first question is, why use a logarithmic scale? Well, probably the main reason is because our ears hear things logarithmically. If you doubled the intensity of sound coming to your ear, you probably wouldn't say, oh, that was a factor of two. That's twice as much sound. In fact, our ears hear things very logarithmically. Our eyes see the, in the intensity of light logarithmically as well. And there's a good reason for that. If we heard sound linearly, the level of sounds we deal with from day to day would just be overwhelming, right? Our ears use a logarithmic scale to compress sound so that things that are really, really quiet, we can hear them, and things that are really, really loud don't drive us crazy. If we, if we heard sound on a linear scale, right, 
you wouldn't be able to hear the crickets chirp at night and uh, someone playing trumpet in the room next to you would just be unbearable. All right, so logarithmic hearing helps us hear a wider dynamic range of sounds. It compresses the range of sounds with this logarithm. And since we hear things logarithmically, it makes sense to use a scale which is logarithmic. Because if I tell you the intensity went up by a factor of four, you're gonna say, does that sound much louder than what it was before? How does that compare? I mean, what happens in my head? What am I really hearing? And a decibel scale is more related to what you hear, all right? That you can say, oh, change of sound intensity by 10 decibels, I know what that sounds like. If I go up another 10 decibels, it's gonna be pretty similar to me, all right? Okay, so that's the main reason. Also, decibels are nice because if you have an amplifier and you have some gain that multiplies the signal by some factor, in decibels you just have to add, you don't have to multiply, all right? Okay, so that's the decibel scale. So we take the logarithm, all right? Now, it's the logarithm base 10, just to be clear, because there's different logarithms, right? There's the natural log. When we do decibels, we're doing logarithm base 10. Now, why is there a 10 right here? It's because they're decibels instead of bells. I don't know why. Traditionally, we started do using the scale that has a factor of 10 in front, and uh, that's just what we stick with, all right? So that's the decibel scale. If I give you the intensity, you can turn that into decibels using this formula. If I give you the sound level in decibels, you can find the intensity by solving this equation right here. Now, since we're dealing with logarithms, it's a good idea to review them. I find sometimes students have gotten rusty on logarithms. So if I have an equation, y equals b to the x, um, probably this is the first time you saw logarithms was trying to solve an equation like this. Logarithms is the opposite of exponentiation. So if I take um, the log base b of both sides, Well, taking the logarithm is the opposite of exponentiation, and this turns out just to be x. So you can use it to solve for x, all right? And if you don't have a button on your calculator for log base b, maybe b is 17, I don't know, whatever it is, remember that log base b is log base anything of x divided by log base anything of b. So anyway, but in, with the decibel scale, we'll be using base 10, and your calculator ought to do that. Okay, now remember, when dealing with logarithms, log of x times y is just log of x plus log of y. You can break them up, all right? Units can be a problem here, right? If x has units of meters and y has units of inverse meters, then that's great. Our logarithm doesn't like units. The product of those two don't have units. But now I have log of x times plus log of y, and the units are weird. So sometimes you have to be careful when you break them up. But this is generally true. All right? Dividing them, this is just equal to log of x minus log of y. All right? Okay. Log... If I have an exponent up here, remember you can bring the exponent out front. So this is just log of x. And I'm not writing the base here, we're just assuming it's the same base. All right, so those are some tricks you can use with logarithms to help you solve problems with decibels. Now it turns out that there's more than one decibel scale. When we say just decibels, usually we mean sound level, which is the equation that I uh, gave before. Um, right, the standard decibel scale, sound level in decibels is 10 log base 10 of intensity over the threshold of hearing, right? That's the conventional one, all right? But there are some other decibel scales. There are decibel scales with weighting, all right? So your ear does not hear all uh, frequencies equally well. So there's various weighted scales people have come up with where they add some weighting factor to this. All right, and we won't be dealing with any of these any of these weighted scales in this class. But just so that you know they're out there, if you buy a, a sound level meter and it reads in decibels, it might have a switch to let you do different weightings, all right? And they just kind of have a pre-factor that it multiplies by, depending on the frequency. But it turns out we use decibels also in other places besides sound. For example, in 
my lab, we do a lot of RF electronics, and a lot of the devices there, the amplifiers and things, are rated they're in decibels. And we use a scale called dBm. And dBm means decibels, but not related to um, the intensity at the threshold of hearing, but relative to one milliwatt. So the sound level in, or sorry, not the sound level, but the power level of your RF signal in dBm is just 10 times the logarithm of the power divided by one milliwatt. So we're just using power instead of intensity and our reference level is one milliwatt, all right? dBV is a way to measure voltages, right? So you measure voltage with a voltmeter. You can also use a logarithmic scale for voltage. So dBV, it's basically the same equation, 20 log, and then it's the voltage over one volt is your reference, all right? Wait a minute said the same thing, but there's a 20 there, all right? Well, that's because, um, didn't really do this in the lectures, I'm realizing, but it's in your book. When we talk about the power carried by a wave, it's typically proportional to the amplitude of the wave squared. That's true for uh, electrical signals, it's true for sound waves, it's true for light, all right? So decibels usually tell us about power or energy. All right, but power is proportional to amplitude squared. So whenever you have a decibel, decibel scale that's using the amplitude, right? If I have a wave coming through uh, on an electrical line, the voltage is the amplitude, it's not the power. And so remember that uh, to get power, you would have to put a, an exponent of two up there, right? But then we move that exponent out to the front and it becomes 20. So whenever you have an amplitude scale, you'll have a 20 in front instead of a 10, all right? This is for your own information. We won't really be doing this in our class, but this may come up sometime. Someday you're gonna be using some piece of equipment. You're gonna have some audio card that you're plugging into your computer that you have to write drivers for, and it'll have sound, it'll have the output rated in dBV or something, and you may need to know about this. So I thought I'd give it to you, this is bonus. Um, Sound pressure level, you can also, instead of talking about the, the power, the intensity in a sound wave, you can talk in terms of the pressure, right? Because a sound wave is an oscillating pressure wave, all right? And so you can talk in terms of the pressure. This is gonna be an amplitude one as well. The power in a sound wave is proportional to the amplitude of the pressure fluctuation squared. It's proportional to it. So this is gonna have a 20 in front of it, right? This is an amplitude scale. DBFV, that's decibels full value, all right? This is used all the time. You get some instrument and it'll have a decibel reading on it. And it's not referenced to one volt or one milliwatt or whatever. It's referenced to the maximum it can put out. A lot of uh, professional uh, sound equipment will have meters rated in DBFV. My DVD player at home, the volume reads in dBFV. So when you turn the volume all the way up, all right, when you turn the volume all the way up, that means it's gonna be 10 log power over max power. So when you turn the volume all the way up, you're, you're, the power coming out is the maximum power. So what's the logarithm of one? It's zero. So when my DVD player is turned all the way up, the scale reads zero. And as you turn it down, it goes negative, all right? What will it read when it's outputting no power at all? If you plug zero in here, what's the logarithm of zero? In any base, the logarithm of zero is negative infinity. So no sound is negative infinity decibels and maximum, right, when, when you're at the reference power or the reference intensity, that's zero decibels.